Intel's Alder Lake CPUs are finally out, and there's a lot to be excited about. We have not one, but two new CPU architectures. We have DDR5, PCIe Gen 5, and finally, no more 14 nanometer. But how does all of that translate to into gaming performance? Is Intel back on top again? Chances are you've already seen and read a lot about these new Alder Lake chips, but in a nutshell, the higher-end Alder Lake chips are now a hybrid architecture with two types of cores. First the performance or P-core based on Intel's new Golden Cove architecture and efficient or E-cores based on Intel's new Atom Gracemont architecture. And after so many years, these new desktop chips are finally made on a new process node. Intel 7 instead of the now eternal Intel 14 nanometer. There's also a new socket, LGA1700, along with a new chipset, most notably Z690, with support for PCIe Gen 5 and, most excitingly, the new DDR5 system memory. And this week Intel released six of these new hybrid Alder Lake chips, the 6 plus 4 core i5-12600K and KF, the 8 plus 4 core 12700K and KF, and lastly the 8 plus 8 core i9-12900K and KF. At most media outlets were supplied with the i5-12600K and i9-12900K, so that's what we'll be having a look at today. The tricky part about CPU game benchmarking is that it isn't as concrete as, say, synthetic CPU benchmarks like Cinebench, where you are sure that everyone runs exactly the same test. With games, there is a lot of room for performance differences. Say, if one outlet uses the built-in benchmark of a certain game, whereas another one uses a benchmark sequence in-game. And even within the game itself, you can test on a lot of different levels, which can also vary from each other in terms of performance. So what I always like to do is to gather data from a lot of different media outlets to get a broader picture on the CPU performance. And that is also what I've done here. Here I've used the following reviews. Linus Tech Tips, Hardware Unboxed, Tweakers, Guru 3D, Gamers Nexus, Eurogamer, Tech Power Up, Tom's Hardware, and IOTech. Bit of details. I hope that you used the results in this case of the with DDR5 memory. We'll also get to DDR4 later. Further details: all outlets used Windows 11. Apart from Gamers Nexus, they used Windows 10. Got the details of the DDR5 memory. Most used DDR5 5200. And all apart from hardware unboxed and tweakers used an NVIDIA GPU, mostly 3080s and 3090s. They used AMD's RX 6900 XT. Let's start with the big one, i9-12900K versus the Ryzen 9 5950X. Can Intel take the gaming crown away from AMD? And here we have the 1080p gaming performance of the i9-12900K compared to the Ryzen 9 5950X, so taking that as a baseline in the performance in each title. And here in 82% of the tests, the i9-12900K was faster. The difference ranges from only a couple percent to big wins of over 20% in Far Cry, Cyberpunk 2077 and Hitman 3. Here the lowest result is Metro Exodus in Eurogamer's test. On average, however, Eurogamer and Guru 3D had the highest results at 112% performance, and on average Tweakers and Hardware Unboxed had on average the lowest results at 102%. Putting those numbers together, we have a total average of 107%. So yes, I'd say overall, Intel is back in the lead again. Moving on to i9-11900K Rocket Lake versus i9-12900K Alder Lake. What is the generational uplift? And here there were only three results where the Alder Lake i9 didn't beat the old Rocket Lake chip. But those differences were quite small, especially compared to the huge wins we're seeing in Hitman, uh, Far Cry and Total War Troy. On average we're seeing a generational uplift of 10-20% to 20 in gaming, which is a lot. 
Moving on to the budget battle, the i5-12600K versus the Ryzen 5 5600X. And here in 73% of the tests, the Alder Lake i5 did beat the Ryzen 5. So comparatively, the difference is smaller here when comparing to the i9 versus Ryzen 9. Especially in Tom's hardware's tests, the i5 struggled. But on the other hand, both Tech Power Up and Eurogamer showed overall strong performance for the i5 in titles like Far Cry and Cyberpunk. On average, the strong Hitman 3 performance compensated in the case of Tom's hardware to 101% average. Guru 3D had the highest at 113, and overall the Alder Lake i5 is 6% ahead of the Ryzen 5 5600X. But can the Alder Lake i5 hold a candle to the 16 core 5950X? It was closer here than I'd expected, as in 57% of the tests, the i5 12600K was actually faster. Especially in Tech Power Up and Guru 3D, the Alder Lake i5 won nearly all tests. However, in the tests of Tom's hardware and Gamers Nexus, it lost nearly all tests. So that is pretty interesting. Taking the average of all tests, the i5 12600K is able to eke out a 1% advantage over the Ryzen 9 5950X. Next up, is the i9 12900K worth the extra money compared to the i5? Well, here in only 13% of the tests, the i5 12600K was as fast, or just a little ahead of the i9. The games that especially benefited from the i9's extra cores include Far Cry, CSGO, Hitman and Borderlands. Guru 3D showed the least difference and Tom's hardware the greatest. On average, the i5 is 6% behind the i9, which is a small difference considering the i9 is twice the price, so you're getting good value for money with the i5. And finally, does DDR5 improve performance? Here Tom's hardware and hardware unboxed tested it, and the results are mixed. Each saw a single game offer substantial improvement in Far Cry 6 and Watch Dogs Legion, but in most cases it actually slightly decreased performance. Well, in the end, if we crunch all of that data together, we get the following picture. Taking the 16-core Ryzen 9 5950X as the baseline, the Rocket Lake 1100K is 6% behind, the Ryzen 5 600X is 5% behind, the Alder Lake i5 12600K is 1% ahead, and the i9 12900K is 7% ahead. Well done Intel, after years of incremental upgrades we now finally have some exciting new Intel CPUs again. Not only in terms of their design, process, but most importantly their performance. It's pretty clear the i9 12900K is the new gaming champion, but even the budget i5 is competitive with AMD's best. Hopefully this video has helped to bring a broader picture to the gaming performance of these chips. And a question for you, will you be getting one of these Alder Lake chips? Please do leave a comment below. And if you've liked this video, a like would be very much appreciated. If you want to be kept updated on future projects, why not consider subscribing to the Fully Buffered channel? In any case, that was all for now and bye bye.